So this is the settlement unit. Uh, it's divided into four parts, changing in the rural settlements of the first one. What you'll find is there is case studies throughout the whole section because they're such different topics um, with some overlapping issues. So let's start with 6.1, changes in the rural settlement. So we would define a rural area as an area that is not urban, uh, obviously enough, and categorized as a village or below. So a couple of the characteristics of rural areas would be similar to how we define countryside. Low population density, low order settlement, fewer services and amenities. You would find that most people in the area share the same accent, beliefs, patterns or behaviors. Um, social and economic inequality is less pronounced in the urban area, meaning that most people earn roughly about the same amount of money. Um, less spatial mobility, so people tend to have a home or property and they stay there. They don't tend to move as frequently. Um, and less social mobility, so there's less opportunities for them, like say a change in career or job. The settlement hierarchy then mentioned there, we talk about low order, middle order and high order services. For a rural area, we will tend to find low order services like a general stop, uh, a shop, a bus stop, marketplace and a limited third place. A third place is anything outside of like school and work and home. Um, so it's a third social spot. So there would be limited thir third places like uh, sports grounds and that type of things. Middle order services then for larger settlements kind of outside of the rural area would be more general shops, medical clinics, petrol station, primary schools, places of worship that would um, facilitate a lot of people from more rural settlements around coming to that middle order service uh, center. High order services then towns and cities would have more specialized stores like hardware stores, computer repair, uh, full-size hospitals, maybe train stations and uh, central bus stations and then having uh, primary secondary schools and perhaps more like universities, right? So the higher order services just continue to get bigger and bigger as the settlement increases, generally speaking. So people will come from more uh, from further away to use those services, meaning that it has a larger sphere of influence. So like going back there to the computer repair store, if there's only one of those, uh, all the areas around it will have to use it. And that means that people will come from further away to use that service. Generally speaking, the way it goes with settlements, just a nice little recap for us, is uh, we start off with isolated dwellings, hamlets, villages, town cities, conurbations, and megalopolis, there where multiple uh, cities are growing in together beside each other. Large population size is usually found uh, at the top, but there's fewer of these cities and fewer megalopoli. Whereas isolated dwellings, hamlets and village, there's a huge amount of them, uh, a huge amount of settlements of this kind, but each one has a small population size. So the way the services go is directly correlated to the population size usually and the highest order settlement at the top. So the capital city, for example, will have the highest population size with the largest number of services and those services will be higher order. So that's the way it goes generally. So the rural area then has lower order services and has the smallest population size, lowest number of services. So generally speaking, that's what we see uh, in terms of the amount of the settlements as well, just the frequency and distribution of it. Things like science and tech parks is a higher order settlement uh, service. So we're going to see that in places like the capital city, not in the small towns. Local markets then we're going to see in hamlets and villages and we're going to see people selling their own produce. But we might also see them in a few central areas like cities now and again. Cinemas, for example, might come in as middle order settlements, so they could be seen in like larger towns onwards and upwards. Um, and we might have a couple of outline anomalies. So anomaly A, anomaly B. Anomaly A is where you have a large population size, but low order settlements. So this could be areas where there's a specific industry like mining, for instance, um, where they're not going to have lots of things like cinemas or football stadiums and that type of thing but they do have a big population that is there to work, for example. So anomaly B then, where you have a low population size and a high number of services, we could think about seasonal tourist resorts where there's not many people actually living there or are full-time residents, um, but their services are very high so that they can maintain a very... 
Okay, guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.